holiday. Good morning. Please sit down. Well, it's lovely to be back here again with you this week, and what a beautiful day as well. Um, very warm welcome to all of you. Very warm welcome to everybody on Zoom, and to anybody who's watching us on Catch Up, if, um, because we are going to record this service, and it will be put onto social media. So just a reminder, if you don't want to appear on social media, um, and you are on Zoom now, if you want to turn your cameras off or change your name, please feel free to do so. And a very big thank you to Bishop William for being with us here this morning. Uh, it's lovely to have you with us again. Thank you very much. Uh, let's just have a moment of silence before we begin our worship together this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. So please stand if you're able and let's begin by singing, O God beyond all praising. sit down as we continue in prayer and we say together the prayer of preparation almighty God, God to, to whom, whom all hearts, hearts are open, open all, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and, and worldly magnify your holy name through Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. A moment of silence as we search our hearts in readiness to make our confession to God. Almighty God, our Heavenly, our Heavenly Father, Father, we, we have, have sinned, sinned against, against you and against, and against our neighbour in, in thought, and word and deed. deed through our negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Please stand if it's comfortable for you, and we'll say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. 
Lord God, heaven <coughs> King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the collect for today. Almighty Lord and everlasting God, we beseech you to direct, sanctify and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that through your most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul. Through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please sit down for our first reading. The first reading is taken from Isaiah, chapter 1, beginning to read, read at verse 1. The vision concerning Judah and Jerusalem that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw during the reigns of Isaiah, Jotham, Isa, and Hazir, kings of Judah. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the instruction of our God, you people of Gomorrah. The multitude of your sacrifices, what are they to me, says the Lord? I have more than enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fattened animals. I have no pleasure in the blood of bulls and lambs and goats. When you come to appear before me, who has asked this of you, this trampling of my courts? Stop bringing meaningless offerings. Your incense is, incense is detestable to me. New moons, Sabbaths and convocations, I cannot bear your worthless assemblies. Your new moon feasts and your appointed festivals I hate with all my being. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands in prayer, I hide my eyes from you. Even when you offer many prayers, I am not listening. Your hands are full of blood. Wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good things of the land. But if you resist and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading this morning is taken from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 to 3 and 8 to 16. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land, like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised, they only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. 
Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Oh, please stand if you're able and we'll sing our second hymn, Only by Grace Can We Enter. <coughs> Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Don't be afraid, little flock, for your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out. A treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed ready for service and keep your lamps burning, like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve, will make them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready. Even if he comes in the middle of the night or towards daybreak. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known 
at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Yesterday we celebrate the feast of one of the uh, celebrate the feast of the uh, one of the greatest feast day of the Christian Church year, the feast of Transfiguration of our Lord. But this great feast day shares with it the anniversary of the dropping of the first nuclear bomb on the city of Hiroshima, Japan, on the 6th August 1945. Whether or not one accepts the arguments that the shortening of the World War II and the saving of the lives of many Allied troops justify the huge destruction of civilian, civilian lives. Between 129,000 and 226,000 were killed by the two bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. There is a poignant significance in this coincidence of dates. On that day, when we remember what might be reconsidered considered among the greatest of our human caused disfigurations, we celebrate the transfiguration, not just for huma humanity, but of the whole creation in and through our Lord Jesus Christ. In the first letter of John, chapter 3, verses 1 to 3, we read how great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Verse 2 says, Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will will be has not yet been made known but we know that when the, when he appears we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself or herself just as he is pure the words, we will be like him, from the first John, letter of John, are the assurance that we are called to the same transfigured glory that was revealed to the disciples on the holy mountain. Karl Barth, a great Protestant theologian of the last century, said that when God looks at each one of us, he only sees Jesus nothing else. When he looks at you, he sees Jesus. That's how God looks at each one of us. He only sees Jesus. That is, in Jesus, we are already become, through him, the sons and daughters of God. That is the secret we need to know and realize how much God loves us. He sees you and I, he sees only Jesus, because if we are in Christ, Jesus, that is the transfiguration. We have been made like Jesus through Christ. His humanity transformed each and every one of us in the world. Every human life, every creature, living creature, we all belong to God. We all belong to the kingdom of God. God's whole creation is what pleases God. And so in our Lord Jesus Christ, the whole of God's creation, we are all children of God. Whether human or living creatures, we are all children of God. Because Jesus, or just God, saw in us Jesus Christ, his son. And so let us have a moment to reflect 
on our identity in Jesus Christ. Let us think of the whole of God's creation, every living animal in the light of Jesus' glory. That vision only can transform our lives in spite of the cruel world we live in. Yes, the world we live in is a cruel world. But the transfiguration of Christ points us to that vision of glory that in spite of the cruel world, the suffering of the world, in spite of all the fears we have, there is hope. There is the trust that God will transfigure us all because that's what God wants us. He wants us to be children, daughters, and sons of God. And so let us, let the words of Jesus in the gospel speak to us today and every day of our lives because we meet challenges all the time in our lives because the world is a cruel world. Do not let do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. It's wonderful news to know, for us to know, that God has given us a kingdom that will transform us in the Christ like. Let us pray. Father in heaven, whose son Jesus Christ was wonderfully transfigured before chosen witnesses upon the holy mountain and spoke of the exodus he would accomplish in Jerusalem. Give us strength to hear his voice and to bear our cross that in the world we come we may see you, see him as he is who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We stand for the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation came down from heaven was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified and upon just Pilate. He suffered and death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated on the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please sit down as we continue in prayer. Charlie, there's a response that you could just show it on the screen for a moment. A better picture than me. I think we might switch between me and the response so people remember it because I never remember different responses. So when I say powerful God, uh, the response is protect us and give us your peace. 
Blessed are you, Lord our God, for you have called us to know you and to love you. You, Lord, are our strength and our shield, our protector and our joy. Blessed are you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Lord, in your power, may your church be a place of peace for the anxious and a stronghold for all who are troubled. We ask your blessing upon all who are involved in pastoral work, especially those in our two parishes here in the Benefice, and for all those in caring for others. We pray for the church's ministry to the outcasts and the marginalised people of society. Powerful God, protect us and give us your peace. We pray for our world where there are always wars and rumours of wars. We give thanks that due to negotiations, much needed grain and oil for cooking is being exported from Ukraine again this week. May those who have agreed to the terms honestly keep them. Show us the peace we should give and the peace we need to forego. We pray for all who are struggling against acts of violence, against poverty and hunger. And we think of all those agencies that help to relieve people and ask for your blessing upon their work and also upon the work of the emergency and rescue services. And we hold in our prayers perhaps here those who were on pilgrimage in Poland and lost their lives or were seriously injured and we pray for all their families too. Powerful God, protect us and give us your peace. We give thanks for the peace and security of our homes. We ask your blessing upon our families and friends. We pray for homes where there is neglect or abuse. We remember all who are afraid and unable to speak out about their troubles. Powerful God, protect us and give us your peace. We give thanks for Louise Tweedy's mum's wonderful recovery, as mentioned in our newsletter this week express our thanks and appreciation to all the medical team and to you all for your prayers for her. We rejoice in your abiding presence and pray for all who feel lonely or anxious. We remember all who are fearful of the future and those who are terminally ill. We pray for those who await a doctor's diagnosis or, are, or who are preparing to go into hospital. We ask your blessing upon all who suffer and upon those who care for them. Powerful God, protect us and give us your peace. We remember this week the family of David Watling as they prepare for his funeral on Tuesday. And we pray for all those who have found such love and affection from their pets and have now lost them and are distraught without them. Lord, all our hope is in you, for you are the giver of life and life eternal. Bless our loved ones who are departed from us. May they share with your saints in the glory of your kingdom. 
Merciful Father, I accept these prayers, prayers for the sake of your, your Son, Son, our Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. We stand for the peace. Friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Self can remain standing if that's comfortable, and we'll sing Beautiful Brokenness.
Blessed are you, Lord of all creation, through your goodness to us this bread to offer, which earth has given human hands and made, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine set before you, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. <coughs> it is our duty and our joy at all times and all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, for he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in our own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have set upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I accept that praise is heavenly Father. Through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and as you, we follow your example and obey his command, granted by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he do the cup and gave you thanks. He gave to them saying, drink this all of you. For this is my blood the new covenant which is shared for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and we look for his coming of your, the kingdom of your glory. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Christ is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is life. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen. Accept through him our great high priest, these are our sacrifice of thanks, thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your Holy Spirit, unite us in your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through, whom, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. With all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory of yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We are one body because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood is shed for you, 
eat and drink, and remember he died for you. And feed on him in our hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Jesus Christ gives a shade for you. Lord Jesus Christ, give the shed for you. Lord and my Lord Jesus Christ, give the shed for you. God's going to share it for you.
strength of our service, Lord, the hands that have taken holy things, may the ears which have heard your word be deaf to clamor and dispute. May the tongues which have sung your praise be free from deceit. May the eyes which have seen the tokens of your love shine with the light of hope. And may the bodies which have been fed with your body be refreshed with the fullness of your life. Glory to you forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. We offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Set us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. In the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in knowledge and love of God and Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you, remain with you always. Amen. Well, thank you very much indeed, Bishop William, for coming to look after us and to lead our service today. And uh, to Linda as well, of course. Um, thank you to Anne, Jenny and Pauline for doing this cameo on Friday. Um, obviously, the people are enjoying it, that we're increasing in numbers. That's brilliant. Um, it is the funeral, Lawrence mentioned it in the prayers of David Watling, on Tuesday at St. Michael's at 1.15. He was part of this church. It does seem a little while ago now since Sylvia died, but we, we have been thinking of him and it would be lovely if as many. I know a couple are able to go. Is it a craft group on Monday? Yes, craft group on Monday, 10 o'clock. Yes, yeah, so that's craft group on Monday. And Lawrence, I forgot to ask, have we got any bands to read out? Oh, that's all right then. Liz will be cross with us if we forgot. <laughs> um, thank you. Oh, right. Right. So, well, that, I think that's about it, unless anybody has anything else to announce. Thank you. I published the bands of marriage between Jonathan Richard Henry. Parsons and Emily Louise Marks, both singles of this parish. Uh, this is the first time of asking if any of you know in course of just impediment why they should not be married, you are to declare it. Let us pray for them. Though those who are getting married, Heavenly Father, we thank you for family life. We ask that your blessing be upon those who are getting married, that they may be free from stress. We ask this through you, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand if you're able, and we'll sing our final hymn together, King of Kings.
go in peace to love and save the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Coffee time.